where we're up to so far. We're now receiving data into our service and we're deserializing that into a lowest price inquiry object. So far, so good. So our next steps are to actually apply the promotions filtering in order to apply the, the best discounted rate and then to return the modified inquiry as JSON. So the way that we're going to work with this one is we're going to miss step two. We're just going to get some of this boilerplate stuff out of the way. So we want to return a modified inquiry. What does that look like? Choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. We need to add those extra fields, don't, don't we, which we are missing. And those are the promotion name, promotion ID, discounted price and price. And then once we've done that, we can replace all of this hard coded uh, stuff here and just send back the correct uh, modified object in JSON format. So let's have a go at that. I'm going to continue to work all this out in the controller at the moment. So this is going to be a temporary measure, which obviously will be changed. And these values will be set inside of our promotions filter when we actually come to doing it correctly. But like I say, we just want to be returning, um, modifying and returning the correct values on our lowest price inquiry object. In order to get a bit of auto completion, I'm just going to add a little uh, dot block here. Okay, and so that should make life easier for me. Then I can just say lowest price inquiry, and then I've got this auto completion, so I don't have to go uh, looking for this stuff or typing it out manually. So first we'll set the discounted price, which was 50, and then we'll set the price, which we said was 100. We'll set the promotion ID, which we've said will be three. And then we'll set the promotion name. So I'll copy this. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna move this dump out of the way here. So I'll show you a couple of different ways in which we can serialize this. One way is to just uh, pass the object into the JSON response and uh, let it serialize it that way. So if I just comment this stuff out here, and so again, I'm saying return new JSON response, then I'll pass the lowest price inquiry and then the code. I've still got my server running. If I go over to Postman and send this now, so we get an empty object but we can fix that by implementing json serialize so where we have our promotion inquiry interface what we'll do is we'll just extend an interface called json serializable this won't work yet we need to actually go and tell our lowest price inquiry which fields to serialize so as you can see we're getting a squiggly line here and what this is telling us is that uh, we're not implementing the method JSON serialize. So if I just hit Alt and enter on Mac, then I can just choose add method stubs and then choose JSON serialize. If I go to the bottom here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tell it to serialize all the um, variables on this object. So return get object vars this. And so what that means is that when it comes to try and serialize this uh, lowest price inquiry object, it will just serialize, it'll include every single uh, object variable, every single property on our lowest price inquiry. And so here, because we're using a JSON response class and not just the plain old response class, what it will do, it will serialize this as JSON. So hopefully we should get a different result now. Let's go and run it again. And so now, as you can see, we're getting our response back in JSON format and we have added those extra fields. However, you may have spotted an issue with this and that is it's not in the same format as what we sent it because we sent it in snake case format. Let's have a look at the body, but it's coming back in the camel case. Ideally, we want to send it back in the same format as which it was received. So our solution that we've come up with so far isn't working, but I thought I'd show it you anyway.
what we've used here is uh, the default settings for the um, Symphony serializer, which doesn't actually convert our fields to and from snake case and camel case, etc. That's not part of the default settings. So there's a couple of approaches we can take here. I could spend like 30 minutes Googling to see how I can um, change the default settings, or we can do something cooler and we can create our own custom serializer. So let's go ahead and do that. It'll give me a bit of an opportunity to explain to you how uh, the serializer works under the hood. So in source, we'll create a new folder there called service. And then inside of there, we'll create a folder called serializer. And we'll call our custom serializer DTO serializer. And this can be the standard serializer, uh, which is used for uh, any transfer objects which are used by our service. Okay, and this will implement uh, the serializer interface, which means that we need to implement two methods here, serialize and deserialize. I'll add a serializer property, which will be uh, an instance of serializer interface also. And then for serialize, we can say return this serializer serialize and then the same arguments this will all start to make a bit more sense in a minute and then context so data format and context uh, exact same arguments as what you see here in the same order in the signature for serialize and then we're going to do the same thing here except it's going to be deserialize so return this serializer deserialize And then we'll add a constructor method where we'll actually go and build up this serializer that is going to be used by our DTO serializer. So this serializer equals new serializer. So that comes from Symphony Components Serializer Serializer. And for the serializer interface, that's Symphony Component Serializer Serializer Interface. Okay, and so the way the serializer is built up is it has an array of normalizers and an array of encoders. Let me illustrate what that means. This is a Symfony documentation for the serializer. The way this works is, so uh, at first we're doing deserialization. So following this path here, it receives uh, the data in a particular format, can be uh, JSON, XML, or CSV, that gets decoded into an array. And so we will need a JSON encoder in order to do the decoding from JSON into an array and in order to go from array to JSON. And then we have uh, denormalizing and normalizing. And so for that, we will need an object normalizer because we want to go from an array, denormalize into an object and then Later on, in order to serialize this, we'll need to normalize back to an array and then encode back to JSON. So back in our DTO serializer here, we're going to say new object normalizer. And then for our encoders, we need a new JSON encoder. And so that comes from Symphony Components Serializer Encoder. Uh, for object normalizer, that comes from Symphony Components Serializer Normalizer Object Normalizer. And so we'll just tidy out these comments. Let's now go back over to con our controller. And what I'm going to do is just replace Serializer interface here with DTO Serializer. And then further down in our code, we need to physically perform the serialization now. So I'm going to comment out this. And we shall say response content equals serializer serialize and that will be lowest price inquiry and then we need to specify the format which will be JSON and then because this should now already be in JSON format we don't 
return a new JSON response, we just return a new response. The first argument being the response content and the second argument again being the status code. Okay, so if we go back to Postman and try this again now, you'll see that we still have camel case and that's because we haven't actually told our custom serializer what to do with the properties. In our object normalizer, we need to do some configuration. Let's go and have a look at the constructor for this. As you can see, quite a few arguments. We don't need all of these, we just need one, and that is name converter. So we need some kind of instance of name converter, an appropriate one which will convert from camel case to snake case. Because I'm using PHP 8, I don't need to uh, specify this first argument. I can just use named arguments, which is uh, pretty cool. So name converter. And the converter I'm actually looking for is called camel case to snake case name converter. So nice descriptive name. You know pretty much exactly what this does. Let's go back to Postman and try this again. Okay, so this is looking good. Everything has now been converted back from camel case into snake case. It's in the same format which was received from the client. And so it will make sense to any client applications which are connecting to our service to receive back the data in the same format which they sent, which is good design. So let's finish off by just tidying up some of this mess that we've made in the course of that. All of this can now be deleted. Pretty good progress there. We're now able to serialize and deserialize our data so that we can modify it and then send it back in the same format which is re was received. So our next step is to actually start looking at this part here, and that is to pass the inquiry into promotions filter and apply the appropriate uh, promotion. And so this stuff which we've sort of done in the control here, this will now uh, be done inside of the promotions filter when we get on to doing that. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.